This is going to be a short video, but I have two important topics to cover. I'm working in the file part 017 underscore composition, link in the description. I'm going to run my formatting code at the top, control enter, and I'm going to move right into the first section here. MATLAB makes it convenient to do lots of math to lots of numbers quickly. Here I'm creating two matrices A and B. They're both two by two matrices, and then I'm going to add them together into a matrix I've named C, and I'm going to display that out with a new line right here just to space it out between that and what I'm going to display down below, which is I'm replacing the value in the C variable with A times 2. So let's see what we get. Control Enter. So when I add A and B together, what happens is a pairwise addition. The 1 in the upper left in A adds with the 4 in the upper left of B, and I get 5 in C. And same thing with the upper rights, lower lefts, lower rights. They just add together, and that's what I get. I get a same shape matrix, same number of rows and columns. Same thing when I multiply A by 2. What happens is the 2 gets multiplied by each and every element of A, and C is this new 2 by 2 matrix. That's every single value in A multiplied by 2. It's not just a single number multiplied by 2. It's four numbers multiplied by 2. Continuing on down, what's important to realize is that dot star, this is a different multiplication than star in certain situations. In this situation, from the first example I just did, if I put a dot in front of it and then rerun this code, you can't even tell I changed anything because I get the exact same result. But down here, it's going to be very different. I'm not multiplying just by a single number. I'm multiplying two matrices together with a dot star, and we're going to compare that to multiplying two matrices together with just star. Control Enter. When I multiply A and B up here, what I get is a pairwise multiplication. Scrolling up in my editor, the upper left value in A is multiplied by the upper left value in B. 1 times 4 is 4. Upper rights, 0 times 1 is 0. Lower lefts, 3 times 7 is 21. Lower rights, 2 times 2 is 4. Okay, so that seems simple enough. Scrolling back down to this example, so what about down here? With just the star, asterisk, for multiplication, we get something very different. Like, sure, the 4 is the same, but that's actually just a coincidence. Everything else is different. What's going on here? When we multiply two variables together that are either vectors or matrices, and we use just the star, what happens is a matrix multiplication, which is different from the element-wise or pairwise multiplication of dot star. Now, later in this video series, I'm going to tell you all about matrix multiplication and what it is and how it works. But until then, we have to be really careful. And I highly recommend that until we get to that section, I recommend just always using dot star dot asterisk for all your multiplication needs. And also, if you ever need to do division, you should use dot slash. If you ever need to do exponent, you should do dot caret. Because if you're working with vectors or matrices and you're not using the dot in front of the operator, you may get something that you don't expect. But the dot operators, whether they be caret or division or multiplication, work with individual numbers as well as doing the pairwise operations or elementwise operations on vectors and matrices as well. Basically, dot star works the way you expect, just use it. If you know enough to know about matrix multiplication and matrix division and matrix exponentiation, fantastic, but we're going to get to that in a later video. Continuing on down to this section, so that dot star, a times 2, it works whether you use dot star or whether you don't use dot star. I'm going to run it again. You can't even tell. Same result. But that's because I'm multiplying by a single number. It's a very different thing when I'm multiplying matrices, whether I use the dot star or the star. And it's the same with vectors. So here, I'm going to raise the vector v to the vector z power. Run this section, control enter. So there's v, 1, 2, 3, 4, and there's z, 2, 2, 1 half. And the result I displayed out uh, transposed. I probably meant to suppress these, so with a semicolon, but it's fine. Now, how did I get this 1, 4, 3, 2? Well, I raised 1 to the second power for the 1. I raised 2 to the second power for the 4. I raised 3 to the first power for the 3. And I raised 4 to the half power, same as square root, to get the 2. If I tried this without the dot, 
Well, it gives me an error. Error using this incorrect dimensions for raising a matrix to a power because it's trying to do a different operation, an operation which I will explain in a later video. Continuing on down. Now, it's not to say that we can't screw up our calculations just using like plus and minus and star and whatnot. And on that note, by the way, you don't need to use dot plus or dot minus. There's no such thing. The addition and subtraction, it'll work fine just as is. Keep using addition and subtraction as just the plus sign, just the minus sign. But like I said, things can still go wrong. Perhaps you can anticipate what's going to go wrong here. I'll run it. And the error is arrays have incompatible sizes for this operation. I tried to add a vector of three values to a vector of four values. Well, one of them has an extra value. They don't pair up, and MATLAB doesn't know what to do with that. Now, if either V had one more value or Z had one fewer values, it would all work out. Continuing on down, the transpose. We've already seen the apostrophe used to help with displaying vectors. So when I run this section, control enter, and then I scrolled up. So here's how V displays out when you just display V. This is the result of running this line right here. I think it displays much better with a V apostrophe, and we can read out the numbers with all this like column three through whatever, whatever, whatever on each line. So there's the result. I think that's nice and easy to read. And all I needed to do was put an apostrophe after V. Continuing on down, now V with the apostrophe is actually the same as transpose parentheses V. And I'm gonna show that here. So I'm actually gonna rerun my code with a wider command window so that it fits better. All right, so here is my original matrix M shown there. It's got three rows and five columns. And when I transpose it and display out the result, it's five rows and three columns. I changed the original by setting the original variable M equal to its transposed self, and then I displayed it out. Continuing on down a little bit, and then I used the other transpose function, transpose written out with parentheses, to transpose M back, and it goes straight back to the original. Again, I think I meant to suppress this line. That's why it displays twice, is because I did not put a semicolon here. So two transposes undo each other. Now I have to confess, I said that the apostrophe and the word written out are the same thing. If you're dealing with complex numbers, they are not exactly the same thing. Look it up, that's a topic for a later video. But for real numbers, the apostrophe and the word transpose are the same thing. Why would you use one or the other? In fact, some people might say, well, why wouldn't you always use the apostrophe? It's much easier, quicker to write out. Well, one advantage of this, and I am being serious when I say this, is that it's easier to notice when you are trying to debug your code. You've got a problem in it, you're not sure what it is, trying to figure out maybe you have too many or too few transposes. Well, these are a lot easier to see and recognize as a transpose than a little tiny apostrophe and seeing where that fits in. Also, the apostrophe is used for other things, which can be confusing. So writing out the transpose function as the word transpose and then parentheses and inside the parentheses, whatever you want transposed, I think is actually a pretty good idea. Continuing on down, ellipses. So you'll see me in this video and in others always be struggling with like the width of my screen. Well, this is just a little convenience thing. It's not actually terribly important for what you can and can't do with your code, but suppose you've got a really long vector that runs off the screen and you'd rather write it more vertically, but it still needs to be a horizontal vector. What you can do is, begin typing it out, and then when it gets too wide, use dot dot dot, or ellipses, to then move down onto the next line. This is effectively telling MATLAB, hey, the next line right here, I want you to treat it as if it was on that previous line. So it's very much as if I just deleted all that and put it all up on this line here. In fact, when I run this code, although it's not well organized to read in the output, the vector f created on this line is exactly equivalent to the vector f created here. And the ellipses are mandatory. If I don't have them, I get an error because MATLAB thinks I'm trying to create a matrix where this is row one and this is row two. But again, the dot 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 ellipses tell MATLAB treat the next line as if it's just a part of the previous line. I should have said this at the beginning, but I'll say it now. All of this code works perfectly in Octave and exactly the same as it does in MATLAB throughout this entire document. Continuing on down, composition. We can combine and nest and put together different vectors and matrices 
as long as the dimensions match up, as long as we're putting square pegs in square holes and round pegs in round holes. So let me run this section. Let me resize and then run this, this section. And I might not be able to quite fit it on the screen. Oh yeah, I can. Okay, great. There is a downside to using such a wide, such a large font. All right, I fit it. I create a vector named B. My variable names are terrible here. They're just, they're meaningless and they're capital letters. These are bad variable names, but we're going to deal with it and move on. B is a vector with two elements. So one row, two columns. Display it out right there. And then what happens here when I say S equals square brackets, a number, comma, B, a variable? And not only just like a numeric variable, but a vector variable with two values. Well, what ends up happening is MATLAB says, okay, you want the four first, and then the rest of your vector is going to be the numbers in that other vector. 1.5 comes next, and then 3.1. So S then is a one row, three column vector. And we can verify that by asking for the size of S, hit enter, one row, three column. Then continuing on down, I create a vector, no, excuse me, I create a matrix named T. I'm using the word matrix to mean two-dimensional organizational structure, usually of numbers, and I'm using vector to mean one-dimensional. So T here is going to be a matrix. I use the square brackets. The first row of T is going to be one, two, three. I use a semicolon to indicate that I want to go down onto the next row. And what do I want that next row to be? I want it to be a copy of the contents of S for 1.5. 3.1. I could also have written this code out without the semicolon as long as I hit enter and move that S down to the next line. I'm going to rerun it. Control enter. Well, I resized my screen, but you know, trust me, it's the same thing. There we go. It is the same thing. But this doesn't work right here. Control enter. Error using vertcat. Dimensions being concatenated are not consistent. The problem is T is a two by three. B is a two by two. The columns don't line up. All the columns need to line up. We need to fit those square pegs and square holes. Continuing on down, composition can become even more complicated. I'm going to resize my window and then run it. All right, so here I'm going to create a new T. I'm going to put new information into T, replacing the old information. The old information is a two by three matrix. It's this matrix right here. I'm going to stack that matrix on top of the vector s on top of another copy of the vector s on top of a third copy of the vector s and we see those three copies one two three right there and i have this new matrix t that contains this information and just more examples of composition here so here i've created this big old matrix what did i create it from well i actually created it from six copies of a little two by two matrix right here i set b equal to in square brackets a on the upper left, another A on the upper right, A in the middle left, A in the middle right, A in the lower left, A in the lower right, and this is my output right there. So I can create these organized, patterned, well, compositions from pieces that I already have and copies of those pieces. And lastly, just another complexity that I can add in running this section. It might look at first glance to be the same, but I've changed this little two by two right here. And you can look in the code, same A as before, but now instead of six copies of A, I've replaced one of those copies with a two by two just full of nines, and I can do that. So the ability to manipulate and modify matrices in MATLAB is unparalleled, and we can do all this stuff in Octave as well, everything I showed you in this video. And that's all for this video.